Hello, welcome to Industry Reactions. Industry Reactions is a weekly briefing on industry events, changes, and future trends that impact your business. We're your hosts, Jeff Martin and Mark Friedel from Chempoint. You can find Industry Reactions on YouTube, LinkedIn, and as a podcast. For those watching on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell and hit the like button. We plan on discussing issues that impact the global industry and help you uncover new opportunities. We hope this will provide market intelligence that will keep you ahead of changing market conditions. All right, Jeff, and our first story this week is an update on Hurricane Ida, which had a fairly big impact on the Gulf Coast, specifically uh, uh, Louisiana. So there's still quite a bit of oil and gas production that remains offline. Um, it is slowly recovering from Hurricane Ida. And you know, one of the, 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 the bigger impacts, I actually saw this this morning, was the the power grid and how that's taking a long time to get get back online as well. Apparently, the number of power power poles that were knocked out uh, for this hurricane was more than Hurricane Katrina, which was a bit surprising to me. But obviously, the oil and gas um, industry is suffering. Uh, a, a big chunk of oil and gas is still offline, and we're seeing crude oil prices steadily climb above seventy dollars a barrel. Um, next up, Asia's petrochemical industries uh, has been facing some logistical challenges just like everywhere else across the world. Um, compound, it's been compounded recently by inclement weather as well as some of the regional producers taking advantage of the strong demand across the world. Um, some of the ocean freight rates have really climbed as of recently. So typical freight rates for a 40-foot container now are around $22,000 to the East Coast in the U.S. and those to Northern Europe are at more than fourteen thousand uh, dollars. So yeah, we're just seeing logistics costs climb and climb, and just the inability um, to move things around the around the world right now. Yeah, and the one thing I read was the the comparison. So twenty two thousand dollars from China to the U.S. East Coast. Well, before the pandemic, I saw prices that were around three thousand dollars per forty foot container. So that puts it in perspective of how big it was. All right, I think we've all heard the stories around the automotive industry and what a, a crazy year it's been for, for the automotive industry. I don't think we've talked too much about it in this podcast, but um, just a quick story. GM um, made an announcement that they're going to uh, cut production um, in their uh, facility in Lansing, Michigan. Um, and again, they're citing just the continued supply constraints really tied to the global semiconductor shortage. So not really new news here, but uh, worth noting that the issues in the automotive industry are continuing. Yeah, I, I've read that, you know, GM was in the news this week, but that's continuing across to everybody. Um, so Ford and the other manufacturers have said they've had the same things. And you were talking about Christmas shopping in our last story. The uh, PlayStation 5 is delayed, or it's hard to get a hold of too because of the whole chip shortage. So um, I know that's uh, just affecting everything. Crazy. Yeah, how you gonna how you gonna distract your kids without your PlayStation? What kids? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, next up, the uh, backlog of unfilled orders in Germany's chemical industry uh, keeps rising. Um, so they've hit a record high in outpacing sales growth uh, amid all of the supply chain problems they're having there as well. Um, according to some of the uh, government statistics out of Germany. The July backlog was at its highest since 2015 uh, when they first began tracking this data. So um, yeah, after coronavirus, this stuff has really started bouncing back and they're having a lot of the same issues that we're seeing in other supply chains as well. Yeah, and obviously Germany is a very important part of the uh, chemical and ingredient industry. A lot of production happens there, some of the biggest chemical companies in the world. All right, now moving on to rail traffic. Uh, rail traffic has, has uh, declined a bit lately. Um, for the week ending September 11th, uh, we saw continued uh, declines in North America, a 2.6% decline year over year, um, and 5% from the previous week. This was according to the Association of American Railroads. Um, it's, it's a little surprising as the, the industry continues to remain very, very strong. Uh, but maybe this is a sign of of some weakness, or maybe this is just some impact of uh, Hurricane Ida and some of the petrochemical industry going offline. Yeah, it'd be, it's interesting to know what's causing that, and 
you know, these numbers do bounce around quite a bit week to week. Um, I always try to look at the year over year numbers, and those are pretty flat compared to 2019 um, as the last let's quote unquote normal year. Yeah, yeah, great point, great point. No, Jeff, are you wearing your Crocs today? I was, I was going to say the uh, this is for all of us who work at home. This is uh, shoe wear that's really up to date here. Um, I, I will be honest, I do not own a pair of Crocs, but um, Dow has partnered with Crocs to reduce the, uh, the or improve the sustainability of the Crocs, the iconic Crocs footwear. Um, so right now, Dow is going to supply a bio-based materials for use in their manufacturing process, which will lower the CO2 impact of the current cross-link material, which is what Crocs calls their um, the material they're making the shoes out of. Yeah, I believe what I heard was uh, Dow's Ecolibrium product will be formulated into the, the standard Crocs material, which uh, from what I see is a, a plant-based plasticizer. So pretty cool, that'll, that'll lower the overall CO2 impact. Um, as opposed to more traditional petroleum-based plasticizers. So yeah, I don't I don't own a pair of Crocs either, but uh, good for Dow and good for Crocs. That's a cool story. Yeah, no, it's it's great for them to be able to improve the sustainability of all these products. Yeah, for sure. All right, next up is DSM, and I think this is a very interesting story. Um, DSM is a a 120 year old company. DSM standing for Dutch State Mines. Um, so a company that's kind of rooted in uh, big industrial uh, production, petrochemicals for you know decades and decades and decades. Well, they're announcing uh, the sale of their materials business, which would basically completely end their run as a petrochemical company. They're going to be completely diversified into nutrition, health, and biotech sectors. The materials business uh, in 2020 had sales of 1.9 billion, which is roughly 20% of DSM overall sales and nearly 3,000 employees. Obviously, it's probably quite a bit bigger this year. Um, these are some of their nylon products, the Dyneema business. Um, so a pretty uh, uh, impressive turnaround or change for DSM in really only about 20 years. I think it was about 20 years ago, they sold off one of their chemical businesses to Sabic. Then more recently, they sold their uh, resins business to Covestro. So if and when this sale happens, it will basically completely 100% turn over and transform the DSM portfolio. Yeah, it's interesting that that Dyneema product has a great brand name in the, uh, in the, te the technical textile products um, and fiber industry. So I'm sure there'll be buyers out there for their for that material. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I've also it's interesting. Um, a lot of the Dutch companies have been, um, we'll say, transforming themselves away from petrochemical products. Um, you, know, you hear a lot of news about those companies looking for new industries and that are no longer petrochemical based. Yeah, great point. More value added markets for sure. Next up, um, ADM has unveiled a new flavor production facility in Punga uh, Pro, uh, in, in China. I would say I'm going to, um, in Zhang province in China. Um, the fully automated center is dedicated to uh, adding new flavors, uh, especially for that market. Um, so there's a lot of, um, ADM has been looking for a lot of different businesses in the, that area. Um, and so they're really looking for new innovations from that technical center, as well as um, organic growth and bolt-on acquisitions there um, around that. So um, exciting new flavors there, and ADM just keeps taking their business globally. Yeah, it seems like they're going bigger and bigger into the flavors and fragrance market. All right, well, that's it for this week's edition of Industry Reactions. We will return next week with a fresh batch of Industry reaction Reactions. Until then, stay safe. Thanks, everyone. Have a great week.